Southwestern, that is an old, you know, that's politically incorrect now. Yeah. Um, they're good. Parrish and I both feel strongly about that. I think so too. Why did they change the name? Do we know? Well, uh, they would like to be recognized as uh, the preeminent university, like 1A. No. And? It's <laughs> changing that to me. Yeah. I like Southwestern too. Yeah. Uh, they're good. Predicted to win their league. Return seven of their top eight scores from last year, and then they add three high major transfers. It's kind of like uh, the SEC. We they've got a transfer from South Carolina, they got a transfer from Missouri, and then they got a transfer from USC. Uh, they're all high major players. So uh, Bob Marlin, great respect for him. You know, it's one of the reasons that we schedule the game because I know that they're going to be prepared and. Uh, they're going to be a team that, that's going to do very, very well in their league. So we have to be prepared accordingly. What did you learn from your guys uh, in the exhibition? You know what? Uh, I, I thought with the naked eye, I was pleased with a lot of the things I saw, which is typically not the case, as you guys know. And then watching the film, I was even more pleased. I, saw, I thought we did some really good things. It was a pretty vanilla scout, meaning uh, they didn't do a lot of action. We didn't do a lot of action. It was just basic basketball out of some – some basic sets, but I thought we did a good job with our scatter report, which I was pleasantly surprised to see with so many new guys. And again, we didn't spend a lot of time on them. Uh, I, I like the fact that we got to the ball defensively. Typically, if you get to that ball, you know, good things will happen. I thought defensively, we were very disruptive. And offensively, we shared the ball. Now, we had too many turnovers. We were a little careless at times, but we assisted on close to 60% of our made field goals. Uh, I thought we did some good things as, as it relates to being unselfish, and hopefully that's a trend that will continue. You talked about Devontae's own ball ability for the whole preseason, but then he comes out and offensively really shows his capabilities there. Had y'all kind of seen that coming? I mean, did, did y'all expect that for him to come out and shine like that? You know, that? I, I think I, I, I said a few weeks ago, I really believe that they'll lead the SEC in scoring before he's done here, and you saw glimpses of that. He just snaps it off so quick, and he's got really quick instincts. And, and he's just figuring things out. He's still moving up until about two, three days prior to the North Alabama game. He and Bruce both, the guys that of the newcomers, I don't count Markell in that so much because he's played Division One basketball, but those two newcomers who have not played in a Division One game, you you worry about overloading them, but you have to make sure you're prepared for everything that you could face is when these games get here. So both of those guys were still in the thinking stage and work moving instinctively as, as quickly as I would have hoped up until about two or three days prior to North Alabama because I think finally they started settling in. So he's still not moving as quick as he can because he's thinking a lot, uh, he and Bruce as well. So, uh, yeah, we, we saw, you know, even in recruiting him, you know, he did lead Oak Hill in scoring last year despite coming off the bench. The reason that he came off the bench per his coach was that he was, he was a guy that could handle that. And he was a guy that was going to bring them an energetic spark, both defensively and offensively. But he still scored. He scored quickly. And I think he'll do that for us as well. I was going to ask about that. His personality, kind of energetic. You can see it on the floor. Is that something that, that is kind of contagious among teammates? You know what's crazy? I've been doing this a long time. This is my 12th year here, 13th year as a head coach. I've been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, in the coaching world. And I have a, a handful of times, there's been some things that have really surprised me. We play uh, um, our first inner squad game, first one that Schuler's ever been involved in. We bring officials in and we do a little coaching or a little referee clinic uh, talking about the new rules and this and that. And then, then we scrimmage. At the end of the scrimmage, two of the three officials come up to me and say, man, I really like that number zero. What a great kid. Well, I had that, that, that happen a lot where an official will come up and, and say, man, I really like him. Just kind of, it, it speaks to what you're talking about. He's just got this energy and he's a kind kid. And he's got a great heart and he plays real hard. and He does it in a way in which, you know, he plays like a cold-blooded killer out there. I mean, he, he, you know, he comes up, shoots in the basket, takes your ball. He's not you know, very nice to you if he's on the other team, but yet he does it in a way in which uh, I think people appreciate. And uh, We knew that he was going to be a key signee for us. I knew he had an opportunity to come in and make an immediate impact, and I feel pretty sure he will. Is it hard to balance it, though? You know, obviously with Devontae and Brian and TD and DeAndre and Marco, you have so many guards. I mean, is it hard to break up those minutes, or can y'all just go small because y'all can switch with guys that got linked? Well, I, I think there, there's options for us to play a number of different ways, and those things will kind of work themselves out. I think it's great for competition, you know, uh, today in practice. You know, those guys will be, you know, I go my ones against my ones. We don't really say, okay, you know, I started a team. 
uh, on Friday that may not be the starter, or on Sunday that may not be the starting group this Friday. That just is determined based on scouting and who's playing well and what different matchups we want to see. So each and every day, you know, TD and Markel will go head up and Brian and Dre and Schuler. I mean, so it, it, it's just been uh, tremendous for all of them because it's helped us get better in our back row. Is it risky to play that deep and experienced team on opening night when you're trying to learn roles and get minutes for a lot of guys? It's certainly dangerous, you know, but, you know, we've never really backed away from, from our non-league scheduling. You know, uh, Adam does a great job, and we're one of only, I think it is 11 teams in the country, or now we're one of only what teams in the country that have had 11 consecutive years of finishing within the RPI Top 100. That despite, you know, there's been years in there where the SEC has been down collectively. I think we're back on an upswing. I think last year was a huge um, uh, show of growth in the league when you get a South Carolina that goes to the Final Four and you get five teams in the tournament. So I, I think the league is in a, in a great state top to bottom, more so than maybe at any time that I've been here. But so for us to finish in the top 100 for 11 consecutive years speaks to we're pretty aggressive in our non-league scheduling. And, you know, people look at Louisiana Lafayette and they say, uh, you know, who's that? Well, they're a team that's predicted to win their league. And then you turn around and Georgia State just beat Georgia Tech in one of those exhibition relief games. And again, it gets an exhibition game, but still it speaks to, hey, this is a group that's going to finish very good in their league. So we've challenged ourselves early and we got to be ready for it.